um, so for the people who are not familiar with a fab lab, a fab lab is short for fabrication laboratory, which is a small scaled workshop with all kinds of digital fabrication tools and technologies. Think of 3D printers, laser cutters, and so on. And our lab in Rotterdam is now, uh, let's say, 12 years old, or young, maybe, I don't know. Uh, and when we started this place in uh, Rotterdam, that was, from my perspective, um, uh, on, the, on the one hand, technology-driven, so all these technologies are fancy, they're cool, they're, I must work with them. But I'm trained uh, as a communication and multimedia designer, uh, which at that point was very digital organized. So uh, we had to work on screens, make apps, websites, and so on. And I was a little frustrated that we did not work in the physical space. So we did not create in interactive installations. Internet of Things was not a term by then, it is now. So for now, it's more common that we enable students, but also within our lab, also citizens, also other designers, makers, creatives, inventors, enabling them to make use of all those machines, but maybe more importantly, use the space within, uh, within that. So, um, yeah, I think within our lab, when, when we started this, just to give you a, bro a little bit of perspective on how this evolved from this techno technologically driven space into a place for transdisciplinary learning. For us, when, when we, once we started this place, um, we thought we should do this. The municipality said, you should do this. This is important for the city, Rotterdam. Uh, the uh, Rotterdam University also said, you should do this, but we don't have space. So there's no space for you to do so because we need classrooms, uh, we need a library, uh, we need uh, places where people can eat. We don't have a place for you to stay, but it is important. So we try to find other places where we could at least start, physical places. And we find this uh, crappy building that was empty within a, a neighborhood that was not easy to, to, get, to get there. So students could not get there by public transport or at least walk 15 or 20 minutes uh, to get there. But still, students came there and more and more and more. So the Rotterdam University was like, hmm, we're losing our students to that far, far away place, uh, which it wasn't suitable for what we tried. But we tried to transform the space because it was small. It, it was uh, difficult to use. We had stairs with all the materials to bring. Uh, but it was our, our space and we had the key and we could enter it. Uh, and students in the weekends were doing like lawn parties and so on. So um, the one thing that was a success, and then I'll, I'll head add over to, to Johannes, what makes it, this place a success is not those machines that we put in a place where that nobody could reach. The success came out of the people coming there. So we hired students to open that lab for I am only one person. So if I'm not there, the lab should be closed. That's a bad idea. Uh, also, if you're a young mother, you cannot be at two places at the same time. So we hired students who were stu studying uh, no matter what course. So they were from computer science, but also from design, uh, all kinds of uh, backgrounds. And we hired them to create a pool uh, to open the lab. We gave them the key and said, success, make sure it's open uh, as mostly as possible. And that is one of the key elements that make the lab still a success because they, with themselves, define how should we do shifts, what should we do, what should we hang, what should we bring there uh, within the lab. But now the lab is located not only uh, at the center of the building where you enter the building, but what started as a small space, okay, you should be in the university because all directors and important people want to share, cool, we're, looking, we're doing good stuff. But we now grow, maybe like an oil uh, <laughs> spilling within the building. So we now use mainly the whole, um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, building. Bu no, not the whole building, just uh, I'm looking for the lower floor. So you enter the building and it's, uh, okay. it's uh, completely uh, filled with uh, lab space. So. Yeah, thank you. So um, you, you showed us uh, how you can bring people together by uh, putting machines in a room. And uh, Johannes, um, um, maybe you can take uh, the question with you. How can you empower students by putting them in a room too? And uh, by this, introducing a bit what you did. Okay, yeah, thank you very much to highlighting and introducing the importance of the space where people come together to create something. 
And please keep that in mind because that's a very core concept of what all we're going to be talking about. Uh, before that, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm coming from a very hands-on practical background. As Stefan said, I learned carpentry and then I was traveling as a carpenter around the world, uh, mostly hitchhiking and uh, sailing and um, yeah, just um, meeting a lot of people, working here and there in different kinds of projects. Then I came to Berlin and uh, studied at this great university. And here I got the opportunity uh, with my, my friends and uh, team partners, Lawrence and Sanjit, to initiate the project lab. So what is a project lab? A project lab is um, the possibility for, for students to facilitate a learning space, like, like a real universal course with ECTS points, and um, learn with other students together and teach other students on a very uh, eye height level and a non-hierarchical um, manner. So it's very democratic. We, decide to get, we decided together which methods to use, which um, yeah, approaches to use in this space of the project lab. Um, yeah, our, our space is called uh, Sustainable Handprints, the project lab. And to shorten it now, now um, I'm working, to get, happy to work in a purpose startup, which also evolved from that um, with a great team. And we're continuing uh, to take these experiences and develop a game-based learning app to create uh, learning experiences and gamify learning experiences. Thank you. Yeah. In, in, in your, um, when we were speaking before, and in the, in the paper you mentioned, also the discrepancy between this openness, the self-driven learning and the institution of a university getting credit points for it and so on. Uh, and also the void uh, to fill it didactically uh, in, in self-driven. Um, how did that come together? Um, yeah, so first the void was there created for us as students, as teachers, teaching tutors. Um, to come up with this concept for a project lab. So we, defi we wrote like a big concept and we were guided um, by um, people from the TU, Frank and Judith. And uh, that was a really great experience to be able to get this trust and responsibility for stepping into the role of being the teacher and also give, being given the opportunity to do it completely different than all the other courses in the university. Of course, some guidelines, but we could like, experiment and we could together in a dem democratic um, space uh, decide how we want to learn, how we want to um, uh, create knowledge together, uh, which experts we want to uh, invite, um, which places we are going to go to, uh, which uh, school classes, for example, we're going to cooperate with, or um, yeah, many, many other opportunities which are possible in this blank space and this void filled with the ideas of the learners. And that is uh, yeah, a very, very powerful, very, very powerful concept to create uh, big ideas, which create a big drive for a team also to, to work, keep on working on this project. In the Fab Lab, you have not only students, but you have a very diverse um, group of participants. And you said participation is one very important aspect. And how do you connect those people and um, bring them, or how do you accompany their process? Yeah, I think within the lab, um, we not only um, are open to students or to teachers or to researchers, but also um, at two times a, a day, we're open to the public. And that can mean uh, designers entering the lab, that can mean civilians entering the lab, uh, just regular people from around the corner. What we, what we um, did a couple years back was uh, describe how do we learn in a place like this. Uh, and within that, we, we called it our didactic compass, because it's not a handbook on how you learn in these places, but it's a compass guiding you where to go to. And one of the four main, main um, uh, principles of this, of this compass, and you can, find, you can find them all in the article in the book, uh, is peer learning, and I think you're, you're all familiar with peer learning, but if you, um, enable peer, if you want to enable peer learning, you also should make people aware of their role in peer learning. So these students that work for us, we call them stewards, 
um, uh, those stewards are also trained in, within our didactic compass and we train them on how to create interactions between peers. So for example, if somebody is sitting over there in the lab and sitting over there and they're working on maybe similar or maybe completely different projects, how to interact them to create new ideas and inventions. And I think one, one beautiful example of that is also within um, uh, when you have to use the laser cutter, we have three laser cutters, but as those are not enough for everyone who walks in to immediately use a laser cutter. You have a queue waiting for uh, the use of the laser cutter. Uh, and we once had these students, I believe uh, the students from the computer science was first. He was working on the laser cutter, stumbling across different difficulties with his design and so on. And we had this art student who also wanted to use the laser cutter. So then you can do two things. The most common thing is say you have to wait before he's, he's done and then you can use the machine. But within our approach, we, also, we always says he's, he's already working at the machine, go meet him, maybe you can help him, maybe you're, he's faster and you can uh, then use the machine. So within our interesting the lab, we're inviting them to uh, get in touch with others. These two students uh, now are creating the most amazing smart uh, 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 smart wear, smart clothes, and those, those art students never thought that she would do th something smart, as I mean within technology, so, so to say, um, and those computer science students never thought that he should do anything with uh, clothes or, or so on. So those combinations and those spaces can enable encounters in between uh, transdisciplinary or in interdisciplinary or just multidisciplinary interactions in between people that you can stimulate. And this is only one example, but you can encourage people to, to find out, to discover, to meet. So just to warn you or to, to invite you, we want to co-create this imagination. So you're already invited to um, bring up um, further questions. Um, before we do this, um, Another question to you, uh, how did you reflect what you were doing in what um, students were learning in the process? What, uh, what did you do? You, you mentioned mentors. Uh, yeah, we actually tried a lot of different methods. So we, every semester was a bit different. Also students could bring in own methods, try it out. Uh, we used um, we used of course like blitz uh, flashlights in the in the ends where everybody was given a voice. We used a lot of digital tools like um, to also reflect on learnings from the students. And I think the most uh, powerful method we actually used was uh, for letting the students of of the course uh, evaluate um, the end of the project or the the, the um, yeah their projects themselves. So they were giving each other grades, basically, and put, ba giving the base for their grading in the end. So they were empowered to really evaluate, self-reflect their own projects. They were doing throughout the semester, but also in the end, uh, evaluating the other projects and reflecting on what, what was well and what was not well. Also defining the criteria themselves. So we would define the criteria ourselves and then they would reflect and evaluate. 